Hi everyone, my name is Betty, and I'm going to be giving my tech talk on quicksort. So I'm going to begin the talk on an introduction to the algorithm, then I'm going to dive into the JavaScript implementation of it, then I'm going to wrap it up with the pros and cons of the algorithm. So quicksort is a divide and conquer algorithm, which basically means that it tries to solve a large problem by dividing it into smaller pieces, solves those, and then puts it back together to solve the large one. Obviously, this guy was not good at that, but quicksort is really good at it. Um, this, the general steps to quicksort is step one, pick a pivot, which is a random value in the array. Um, step two is to partition. Basically, you move all values less than the pivot to the left side and all values greater than the pivot to the right side. And then step three is recursion. So this is just a brief summary. I'm going to go into detail to all three steps. Um, so I'm going to start with step two, because I think you guys need to know more about the algorithm to know how to pick a good pivot. So step two is the partition step. Uh, so this is the algorithm. It looks like a lot, but it's pretty easy after you visualize it. So you start a pointer at the left side of the array, and then you start a pointer at the right side of the array, and then you have a pivot somewhere in the middle. So you first start with the left pointer, and you compare the value at the left to the pivot, and if it's less than the pivot, you continue incrementing the pointer. So if it's less than it, you increment, and when you hit a value greater than the pivot, you stop. And then you continue, you do a similar thing for the right one, but you compare if it's um, greater than the pivot. So once both the left and right have stopped, you swap both values, and then you move the left and right up one again, and then you continue until the left and right either hit each other or cross. So this is the visualization of it, if you're still confused. So as you can see, you can see the left and right pointers and then in this case, five is the pivot. So step three, you move it up to two. And then it's, uh, two is less than five, so you continue moving the left pointer. And then you hit six. Six is greater than five, so you stop the left pointer and you start moving the right pointer. And then you continue on the right side. And then for step six, you swap the two, and then you continue down. And step eight is they've crossed, so the partitioning is done. Um, so this is the code in JavaScript. I intentionally left choosing the pivot empty, because we're going to go over that later. But it's pretty straightforward. It's a bunch of while loops, um, checking to make sure that the uh, pointers haven't crossed, and if the values are less than or greater than the pivot. I used ES6 for the swapping, but you could have done it like without ES6. So going on to step three, this is the recursion step. So after partitioning, um, uh, what's interesting is that the pivot, so what's interesting about partitioning is that the pivot ends up being in its correct position. So in this array, the five is actually in its sorted position. So now you don't need to touch the pivot anymore. So after partitioning, you can now ignore the pivot and start doing the quicksort on either side of the pivot. So um, you have the pivot, and you have two unsorted arrays on each side, and then you just call quicksort on those two arrays again. So if you first have to check if there is anything left on either side. And if there is, you can call the recursive step. But if there isn't, you don't do it. So recursion stops when quicksort is called with an array with length one or less. So this is the code for it. Um, the index that's returned from the partition just uh, helps you figure out where the pivot is. So you can check how, uh, so you can check how, like how far it is from the pivot, how far the left and right pointers are from the pivot. And the initial call is with the array, uh, index zero, and the last index. So. That's the quicksort function. So we can go on to step one, picking a good pivot. So actually picking the wrong pivot can actually lead to a 
great decrease in runtime down to O of n squared. Uh, we don't want that because there are a lot of algorithms already that already do O of n squared sort, like bubble sort or insertion sort. And uh, the point of quicksort is for it to be fast. Uh, an example of quicksort falling down to O of n squared happens, uh, let's say like we choose the pivot to be like the first element of the array every time, and we do quicksort on, on a sorted array. That would cause every, like, Every time there's a partition, that would that would lead to um, items not being able to be pushed to like half the items wouldn't be pushed to an, to the other side of the pivot, which is like the wh which is what makes quicksort fast. So picking like so to avoid that, we're gonna choose to pivot as the median of the array which is still not the best way. There's like better ways to optimize it, like finding the average uh, value and using that as the pivot. But of course, that takes time too. So like picking a pivot or like having a good quick sort is like a good, like there's, there are ways to find a good balance between that. So this is a visualization of everything together of how quick sort works. In this case, they chose the last element to be the pivot and then they swap it with the correct position, so the pivot ends up being in the right spot. So as you can see, they, they move everything to one side. They move everything less than the pivot to the left, and then everything greater than the pivot to the right. Uh, putting it all together, here's the JavaScript. and. We could run it on this small array, because I didn't have time to make a bigger one. And then it's sorted. Yay. <laughs> so um, the pros to quicksort is that when implemented well, it can actually be two to three times faster than its main competitors, merge sort and heap sort. So that's like really good. And also Google's V8 array.sort uses quicksort while like Mozilla uses merge sort. So uh, there, there are pros and cons to both. Um, cons to quick sort it, is that it does not guarantee O of n log n time every time, unlike merge sort, which is always O of n log n, no matter what, because it always divides it into singletons and puts it all back together, no matter like how sorted the array is. Um, Quicksort is also unstable, which means that if an array has values, like a bunch of values that are equal, in the sorted array, those equal values could have, could, uh, they end up switching position. Like it's possible for them to switch positions, even though they, they are equal in value. So um, that, that might not, it might not be obvious why that matters. Like who cares if the, equal values are in like different positions if they're equal. But uh, that could be a con because it's like there's unnecessary swapping and that decreases uh, runtime. And here's like a visualization of that con. So like here is quicksort run on like a random array, nearly sorted, reversed, and like an array with few unique values. So if you play all, all of them at once, you're gonna see the, f the one with few unique values takes a lot longer because it's doing a lot of like unnecessary checks and swapping. So yeah, that is quicksort. I hope you guys uh, learn how to use it and you might be asked about it in interviews. Thank you.